At 37, I was stuck in a sales job that just sucked the life out of me. I worked weekends, I worked holidays, I was never home. I always chased quotas and it just didn't feel meaningful for me anymore. I had a family to support, I had zero tech experience. One decision changed everything for me. And in just 18 months, I went from zero tech experience to a full-time software engineer. If you ever felt too old, too behind, too scared to start over, this story is here for you. Hey everyone, I'm Johnny Pirano, a full-time software engineer who broke into tech at 39 with 20 plus years in sales. I had no CS degree. I had zero tech experience, unless you consider me playing video games, techie, or selling TVs. But no tech experience and no connections. I'm here to help late bloomers in their 30s or 40-somethings just like you and me, break into tech and start over through beginner tutorials, career switch advice, and mindset shifts that will definitely stick. I'm building financial freedom for my family, and I'm documenting every real step of the journey so that you can do the same. Not just highlights, I'm talking about the losses, the wins, and what it actually takes. Hit subscribe and let's build this together. Now in this video, I broke this up into six parts. I spent over 20 years in sales and leadership roles. I went everything from part-time to full-time to supervisor to general manager and different type of sales, right? Retail sales, office space sales. And yes, I coach employees, which is awesome. And not to say that I don't like sales. It's just, it changed somewhere in life for me. And it's just not what I wanted to do anymore. I definitely had long hours. I remember sometimes just like sleeping in the break room because it was day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday sales. And it was just a long day that we had to be there. I worked weekends all the time. I worked holidays. I just missed a lot of family events and just a lot of time that I wanted to spend with my family. Now, I did acquire a liberal studies degree and that helped me in my sales roles and going up the chain. And it just helped me solidify myself in that career. But I just didn't feel fulfilled. I wasn't happy anymore. And so in 2020, I started dabbling with some online stuff and I just got interested in the coding atmosphere. Now, I also DJed for a little bit and that's something completely separate, but I needed to get a website going. And so I just started dabbling. How do I do that? So in 2021, I decided I wanted to try something new and it was software engineering. So what did I do? What I thought you needed to do. You needed to get a CS degree. So I went back to school to try to get this degree. But let me tell you, math and I just don't get along. And when I hit the milestone of going to a calculus class, I really sucked at it and I failed it. So I did fail calculus, which put me in the place of, is this really for me? I started doubting myself again because this is brand new. I felt like I was starting completely over, which technically I was, but I just didn't feel like I can do it anymore. I didn't even know if I wanted to do it again, but I had a family and that's just like my motivation that I needed to go through. I needed to just have them push me. Luckily, the university that I went to decided that in that same time frame where I was taking calculus, they released a new program and, and it was for full stack web development. So I look at the curriculum and I noticed right away that there was no math classes. Now there was a couple here and there, but just no math classes that would be the same as calculus. So what did I do? I switched straight to this new degree. Now keep in mind, I was already doing the software engineering degree for maybe, I don't know, a month or so, two months on there. It's just calculus was one of the classes that I had to go through. But then I ran into another obstacle, right, for myself. And that was the fact that because I had a degree already from liberal studies, I ran out of financial aid. And what was I going to do? I had two years left or two and a half years left of this degree. And I wanted to go into software engineering and I wanted to go and be a developer. And I just didn't know what to do because now I had to owe a lot of money. And what do you do? I would have to pay each semester out of pocket. And that's just to me it was wild. Now, in the meantime, there was a program that I also signed up to. And again, I was very interested in software dev and on software engineering and the whole tech thing that I went ahead and signed up for this class. It was like a couple classes, but anyways, it was about four to six weeks and it concentrated on like very minimal HTML, CSS, and just like the starting point on how to be a full stack web developer. And I went ahead and did it, right? I tried it out. It was awesome. I got to build some little cool projects, but most importantly, I met a super cool teacher and completely changed my life, right? We chatted, I told her about my outcome, what the dream goal was, and that was to become a software engineer. I explained the financial situation with the financial aid. The first thing she said to me was, you do not need a CS degree. You do not need another degree. And I was baffled, right? Because this is a teacher at the university. And I was like, okay, what do I do? How do I do this? And what steps do I take? She happened to be connected to a boot camp that was running out of Chicago. And she suggested that I go ahead and try this out. After a few more minutes of chatting a little bit back and forth, she helped me figure out where I needed to be after just talking everything with her. And I was spilling, this is my goal. This is where I'm at right now. This is where my family is. I talked to my wife at home. Now keep in mind, I also had a child at the time. Now I have two, but at the time all this was happening, that same day I quit the university. It was like I had a conversation with her in the morning and in the evening I went online at the university's website and I just canceled my entire degree program. Now that same week, I went over to that boot camp. I 
gave them a call. I applied. I actually did a scholarship with them. There was minimal amount that I had to pay to the coding boot camp in order to start. So I went ahead and did it. I got the scholarship and here I go. I started the boot camp. So these are the things that you need to get started. Now, I know I said this before and I just said it maybe two seconds ago, but you don't need a CS degree. Literally what you need is just your motivation, your willingness to learn, patience. You're gonna get frustrated, but you don't need a CS degree. Now the bootcamp that I attended is Actualized Bootcamp, which was located in Chicago. They have online classes and they are super awesome. Their tech stack includes learning Ruby, learning JS, HTML, CSS, React, and they go through a whole bunch more on there. So I will make a separate video on just that alone and what they offer and stuff like that. Now there are a ton of resources out there and I'm sure I'm probably gonna miss several out there, but the ones that I used included Scrimba, which is amazing supplement to the bootcamp. They have the front end developer path. If you guys haven't checked it out, scrimba.com. I'm not affiliated with them. I, that's what I used. And I just, I thought they were awesome. The way they engage with you, the way they show their material and their courses, just check them out. That's awesome. I also did things like leak code. I follow people like tech with Tim, Tiffin tech, Kevin Powell, just a whole bunch of resources out there. And then obviously you can just use a search engine to find specific topics or contexts that you want to go through. Other resources that I had were obviously the bootcamp and I had teachers at the bootcamp, my peers at the bootcamp, and just peers that were involved in software engineering or developing. I try to give them a call or just shoot them a message like, hey, I need this. What should I be doing? I just try to get all the info and all the learnings that I could from many different areas. Now, let me talk about mindset. It's hard at the beginning, but it doesn't mean you can't do it. It's patience. Obviously, you're looking at like a dark screen with rainbow letters and numbers and symbols, and there's just a whole bunch of stuff on there. My wife looks at me sometimes. I'm crazy when I'm looking at this stuff like, oh, Matrix. But honestly, you got to embrace the challenge. It's like a puzzle, right? You get frustrated because you can't figure out what pieces go with other pieces, especially if it's like a thousand piece puzzle. But once you finish it, you get that fulfillment. Oh my gosh, I actually did this. Maybe you stepped away for a little bit, but you know, you finished it. And so you got to use that same mentality with coding, learning, finding the way, the right way to learn. Everyone learns differently. So you just got to find what fits you, how you can learn and go back to the resources part. And you can find a lot of resources that'll match how you learn. And my last part of this, is what else do you need? That's going to be your family. To me, my family is the biggest reason and the biggest motivator why I'm a software engineer today. Like I said, back then when I started, I had one daughter. When I finished the path, I had two daughters, my wife, my full family. I'm here supporting them. But man, they supported me so much. And sometimes they saw me really frustrated, like I was giving up. And I reminded myself that I was doing this for them. And that just kept me going. I just didn't want to stop. I needed to get to the end result of me being that software engineer. That was the vision that I had. And so I talked about it. I shared all my little projects with them. I even made little games for my daughter to play. That is my motivation. You got to find that for yourself. Use that motivation. Use your goals. Use your family. Use your friends, your peers. Use the resources. Just put it all together and your mindset just has to be on go. Like, I'm going to get this. Hey, everyone. I hope you're enjoying the video. I just wanted to drop in right now and let you know that I'm sharing with you the exact resources that got me hired as a software engineer. It's completely free. The link's in the description. I'm talking about the free resources that I used, the paid resources that I used, the dev tools, the project that got me hired, and some of the interview strategies that I did. Links in the description, grab it free. Let's get back to it. So one of the first roles that I got as an engineer, and I'm talking about not working for a huge company or anything like that, but what I did is I became a TA for the bootcamp that I was at. Right after I finished mine, I began as a TA and I pretty much repeated that whole thing over again, right? But this time I was on the other spectrum. I was helping students that was just starting. I was a little bit ahead of them, but I was already helping them out with what they needed to learn. And I had that perspective of, oh, okay, this is how it is. And this is what I need to do. And that just made the stuff that I learned in the course repetitive in my head so that I can keep learning and just have it stick. I helped them learn HTML, CSS. We did SQL, React, and just build the project that I built already four or five months ago prior to that and help them run through the starting point to the end point and just keep everything clicked in so that I remember everything that was taught to me and so that I can teach it back to them. Then in May of 2023, I finally landed my first role as a full-time software engineer, which was awesome. Everything that I worked for paid off. Everything that I worked for made sense. I finally had this realization that, man, I did all that work. I did sacrifice my nights, but I did it. And now my wife's proud of me. My family's proud of me. And I'm proud of myself. 
Now I use Angular, I use TypeScript. The workflows include pair programming, test development. There's just brand new things that I haven't worked before. I will say that the bootcamp set me up for that success in that moment. And you just kind of have to go through that learning curve. And it doesn't matter because you can do it all. If I went through this whole bootcamp and learning everything from scratch, from sales to now, going into a new role as a software engineer, to me, it was just amazing. Be patient. And as you keep practicing and practicing, things will get better. So how did I balance it all? Family, work, learning new things. Like I mentioned before, I have a family, my wife, my two kids. I had to make sure that I was there for them at all costs, right? I didn't want to sacrifice my entire time. So that's very important. And I will get into other videos and kind of show you what the schedule was, how I manage those things. Now, I use early mornings to study, maybe some late nights after they go to sleep, before I go to work, before I did my sales work. That's how I would do my scribble lessons on there. My boot camp was in the evening. So that was like Monday through Thursday, six to whatever. But any free time that I had, I spent it with my family. Thankfully, the boot camp had a cool program that was virtual. And so I was able to stick to being remote as I was learning. The hours were evening hours. I kind of just stuck myself to that and figure out what free time I had that I can spend with my kids. And I just try to work around my calendar and made time for my family and made time for learning. But the most important part is that there is time. You just kind of have to find it. If you really want it, you have to find it and you have to make it work. Prioritize consistency over perfection, right? So that means spend 20 minutes here, spend 15 minutes there. You don't have to be like, oh, this is gonna be eight hours of me doing coding or learning how to do this. The moments that I had free throughout the day, I would do 10 minutes here, 20 minutes there. My kids, soccer, swimming, dance class, you just gotta find that time. And again, that's consistency every day, trying to figure out where in the day can you add these extra minutes to help you learn and keep pushing forward in your development. A couple of the key skills that I think my sales career is basically communication, communication and problem solving. These are skills that I learned, got really good at, that I definitely use today in my career, whether it's talking to peers or as I'm coming up to a solution and just communicating, maybe I needed a change in my work. Maybe I needed a change in the code base, or maybe there's something that just doesn't look right to me that I feel like I have input on, I went ahead and just make that communication out to the team or just in general, communication and problem solving are skills that I learned in sales that I think have helped me be successful. And it just serves so many purposes, but definitely what you need to make sure you do so that you're balancing all of this is you need to take breaks. Sometimes I needed my mind to reset. Maybe I was frustrated. I couldn't figure out a piece of code or I just couldn't get it. Whatever the case was, I just took breaks, whether it was walking or listening to music or just going somewhere. I don't know. It was simple to just be like, all right, I'm going to get back to this later on. And when I did that, whether it's 15 minutes or 20 minutes or five minutes, as long as you step away and come back, I came back to it and things clicked in for me. I started getting it and I just did that periodically throughout my career and I still do it now to this day I do it now when I can't get something at work and it's just difficult or I don't know I just don't get it yet I go ahead and take a break and all of a sudden I come back and boom the code runs smoothly so just take breaks it avoided me from burning out so just do it first of all start small pick a language I sure did. And this is why I'm telling you, just pick one. I went through JavaScript. I went through Swift. I went through Java. I didn't know where to go. And so I just picked multiples. But then I realized that when I stuck with one, things started to click in, you know, fundamentals. I stuck with Ruby and I just went with that. For me, it was structured programs. Yeah, I went the university route at first, but then when I dropped and went over to the bootcamp, it was structured. It was courses. And I found myself learning better when it was this is starting point a and this is where you're ending part b you got to figure out how you learn right so use what's comfortable to you you can try online classes you can try a boot camp you can try youtube right there's kevin powell tech with tim leak code there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can search but there's a ton of content on youtube itself Another big one is join a community, whether it's a Slack community, a Discord community, a community that's part of your boot camp or local meetups, or just a group of friends that are doing the same thing that you want to do, utilize them. You know, communities are awesome. And why do I like them? It's because if I have a question, I just ask. They're working through the same things that I'm working through, or maybe they're a step ahead of me. And so you ask your question, you get your feedback, you get your input, and that just helps you continue the learning curve. Don't forget to build projects. If you're learning, the best way to learn is through projects, like actually doing the work. You're not going to get it unless you start implementing some of those learnings that you're doing. Now, I went back to one of the online courses I took, and that's through Scrimba. I went through their front end developer path, which is amazing. And I did all the projects in there. I ran everything locally and build everything locally so I can have that work connected to my Git repository. I just went ahead and did all the projects. What did I do with those projects? I created a portfolio so that I can have things that I can show. I created those 
those projects. And I did some stuff that I learned on YouTube as well. And I just put them all on my website and said, hey, look, this is the work that I've done. It doesn't matter how small it was. It shows that I actually practice my craft. Another thing that you want to do is always talk about the things you're learning. I talked about it to everybody, whether it's my family or my wife. I probably talked to her and I'm sure she was like, hey, stop. But I did it. I talked to friends when we were at parties, get togethers, or just anywhere that I could. I always talked about what I was learning. I was showcasing, hey, look, I did this little cool project. I made a flippy card thing or anything as minimal as the project was itself. I showed it to people. And one that just showed that I was passionate for it. Two that reiterated the learning. So like the code and you know how to build stuff. Cause I was always explaining things over to them. And three, you never know who's gonna hear you. And I can get to another video on how I specifically landed my role because number three is what got me there. Do it. Talk about it all the time. It's your passion. So just go ahead and do it and good things will come and you'll reiterate a lot of things that you're learning, right? So just do it. Talk about it. And the last piece of this is just be patient with everything. You know, your first role is not going to be perfect. And if it is, that is awesome because you work for it. So just be patient and stick with it. You got this. If I can do it, you can definitely do it too. So now that I shared all that, what actually changed? First of all, I am now remote. I don't work weekends. I work nine to five. I work at home. I, it's very flexible and I get to spend a lot of time with my kids going to their soccer games, dance class. I get to do all the things that I couldn't do before and that's just what I wanted and that's what I work for. Financially, of course, my salary went up. I wasn't chasing this commission based on there because I didn't want to do that anymore. I wanted a steady salary and so that changed for myself and for my family. I also got to prove to myself that I could do it and that I did do it. There was there was this doubt, imposter syndrome, like, how am I going to get this? Especially when I fail calculus, right? How was I going to get there? And I did it. And now there's a self-realization that, yes, I actually went through that work and I got to this end result of being a software engineer. And that was my dream. So I could do it and things can happen as long as you stick with them. So proving to myself that I could do it was just mind blowing. And I loved it. For my family, it was great seeing this transformation of how I went from sales and just not being happy anymore to being this cool dad that can build games or build cool things that my daughter can tackle and play. And fun fact, she does like coding as well. Another key point is confidence. It doesn't matter how old you are. Age does not matter. And that's one thing that really I had in my head, whereas I kept worrying about, oh my gosh, I'm too old to start learning something new. I'm too old to start coding. It just, it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant and you can do it at any age. Age does not define your potential, okay? Age does not define your potential. You can do this just like I could do it. So just go ahead and start coding. Start dabbling around in some of the new languages. Get familiarized or just look at content. Also, your mindset is very important. In the beginning, I felt lost. I felt I didn't know what to do. And my mind was going a million different places, especially with the different roadmap as they are. You don't know what you should be doing. I didn't know what I should be doing during that time. Should I do this language? Should I go to this school? Should I take this boot camp? Should I just learn it online? I had no clue. And I had to get my mindset to make sure I stay positive and then I stick to the plan. Give myself time to figure out things and that's okay. It's okay to, if you don't know where you need to go or if you don't know what steps you need to take, you learn through those things. And now I utilize that same form of thinking. Every time I get a new language or if I'm trying to figure out something new from the company that I work for, I have to get my mindset right because things are going to get frustrating. Technology sometimes can be a little bit tough, especially with new things, AI or micro front ends. It's definitely a struggle. You just got to embrace that, learn through it, practice it, get to know it, familiarize yourself, look up content, and then just keep your mindset very positive. You will definitely get through it. If you connected with this story, if the story resonates with you, do me a favor, hit subscribe. I'm gonna be sharing everything from beginner coding tutorials to mindset shifts to the books that I'm reading. Even in my YouTube journeys, I'm building this channel. Also, I'm gonna tell you exactly how I got my first software engineering job. Everything from, did I interview? How did they know me? How did they hear about me? What steps did I take? Did I have to learn anything new? I'm gonna share all that in the next coming video. Also, I wanna hear your story in the comments. What's holding you back? Are you switching careers? Do you want to learn how to code? I want to get this community built together where we can share things like this. And you're not alone. You're not behind. You're right on time. This is your time. Okay. This is your move. And I'm here to help you out. Subscribe, leave a comment and see you soon.